Hey all, your OS reviews. Today we're taking a look at the Google Pixel 4 in 2023. This Android smartphone debuted in late 2019, making it now three and a half years old. Of course, now we're up to the seventh generation of the Pixel smartphones, but one of the reasons why you may want to consider a Pixel 4 would be price, along with a slightly more compact frames. Starting with the first point, this thing now sits at around $100 when shopping around, putting it into budget territory, and it has a Qualcomm Snapdragon 855 processor. It's the last Google Pixel smartphone to have a flagship grade Qualcomm processor because with the Google Pixel 6 debut, kind of a soft relaunch for the brand, they started using in-house silicon known as the Tensor chip. So the Pixel 4 is still the third most powerful Pixel phone on the market. That's only surpassed by the Pixel 6 and 7. And then point B would be compactness. This phone has a 5.7 inch Full HD plus 90 Hertz OLED display. Of course, the XL version of the phone has a larger frame, but on the standard variant, it actually has a similar footprint as something like the Google Pixel 2 or the Google Pixel 1 that has a older 16 by 9 aspect ratio 5 inch screen. So they essentially put a taller, more stretched display into the frame of a phone from generations past and again, makes it a lot easier to hold if you have slightly smaller hands. That's a departure with the current generation Pixel 7 that has moved up to a much larger 6.3 inch panel, which is more of a two-handed device for many folks. Similar to iPhones, it uses depth mapping to scan your face and then securely unlock the phone. And to date, the Pixel 4 is the only Pixel smartphone to have true 3D or real secure face unlock. That space is also occupied by what Google called the Soli Radar Sensor. So when the phone feels your presence nearby, it will actually unlock a little bit faster. In addition, if you're in, say, a music playing app like YouTube Music, you can do things like play and pause the music as well as skip tracks left and right using some of the air motion gestures, which is kind of playful. Uh, you can also use that gesture when you're interacting with the alarm clock to mute it from afar without even touching the display. That might be a little bit more convenient, say, if you're cooking and you're using the phone as a timer. You don't want to get the phone's display dirty. But aside from those applications, unfortunately, the solely radar sensor wasn't really embraced by app developers, and so we never got quite as much content for it as what I think Google maybe hoped. And so this was a hardware function that just got discontinued, starting with the Pixel 5 and newer devices. The entire rail here is constructed out of a powdered aluminum alloy that feels very sturdy, but has a little bit more grip compared to something that's polished. The bottom here also has a Type-C port for charging, which at 18 watts, it's still a little bit on the slower side, but it will at least top up in around an hour and a half. And there are stereo speakers on here at the bottom, and then the your piece serves as a second speaker. And then of course there is no headphone jack, but that was kind of the norm since very early generation pixels. Overall though, very well constructed. The back is also made out of glass and thankfully does support Qi wireless charging. So it's a good use of that material. The black version here though is a fingerprint magnet. So I would perhaps recommend the white or the orange colored variants, which tend to be more matte and good at hiding fingerprints. Regardless, the very top here also has the square shaped camera setup and that's using the very classic 12 megapixel primary lens. And then what's new on the Pixel 4 was a two times telephoto lens for zooming in a little bit closer, also rated at 12 megapixels and then a dual tone LED flash. So this was the first time that Google introduced a second camera sensor on their phones since all of their prior devices up till the Pixel 3 kept due with only one sensor that was at 12 megapixel lens that did magic with the computational photography algorithms. But with growing competition, trying to add more versatility in different shooting scenarios, this was Google's response to start incorporating that in. And then there is an 8 megapixel selfie camera there on the front. So as we talked about, face unlock is super fast on this device, and I would say it's on par with what Apple has with Face ID. It works 10 out of 10 times because of that depth sensor and IR sensor. It also works in pitch darkness at night, although there is no actual fingerprint scanner on this device. Now in terms of the software experience, this phone is now running on Android 13, but that is the last OS level update that the Pixel 4 series will receive. So the upsides, of course, of a Google phone is your first in line to receive those updates, 
pretty much on day one compared to other manufacturers which may take weeks or even months to finally update to the same OS level. With that being said, in 2023, there are certain players like Samsung gradually catching up to what Google has to offer in terms of longevity of software support, which by the way is still shorter than what Apple provides on their iPhones, like it or not. So with Google, you get three OS level updates. And although that was really good, especially on the earlier generation pixels, I think increasingly we would like to see Google further expand on that. Something like maybe four generations or even five could make it more of a differentiator compared to other OEMs, especially since the hardware of this thing is still, again, very fast and perfectly capable of running newer software if Google chooses to support it. Aside from that, though, the phone is also going to be IP68 for water resistance. Maybe the only hardware spec that is showing its age, and I don't think it was the best decision to start with, would be the battery capacity on this base Pixel 4, which was only 2,800 milliamp hours. For a device that also has that solely radar sensor, which will constantly be on, trying to sense if you're nearby, you can expect higher battery drain, even when the phone's display is technically turned off. And this is a device that will definitely only last you a day, if not maybe requiring a top-up in between. So that's one thing if you do need a extreme power endurance champion. Unfortunately, Pixel series phones have never been too strong in that department. Google really should have put in something like a 3,300 milliamp hour cell, at least in my opinion here, but oh well, it is what it is. As for other elements of the software, as aforementioned, it is super stock, and because of the fast 90 hertz refresh rate, things are still feeling super fluid and smooth as you're swiping and interacting around. You also get a healthy sprinkle of Pixel exclusives here, including Edge Sense, which was a feature borrowed from HTC. You can actually squeeze the side of the phone to bring up the assistant. The phone also provides a live transcription, so if you're playing back a video that doesn't have subtitles, it will do that automatically using the ML built into the phone, which is neat. In addition to detecting if there's music playing nearby, it will show you the name of the song as well. Let's jump into the camera performance next, and this is another highlight on any Pixel phone, is really the excellent still images that you can capture. 9 out of 10 times you'll end up with beautiful looking shots without needing to recapture anything, and the outstanding processing, HDR effects going on behind the scenes is working magic. You don't get, say, a pro mode, but you are able to very easily zoom into subjects, again, switching back and forth between the primary and the two times telephoto. What's neat is there's not really any difference in terms of color science going back and forth between them, and you can further zoom all the way up to eight times, although that will be done digitally. The true claim to fame of pixels, though, would be night sight. The ability for you to turn almost pitch dark environments into daytime like shots is nothing short of spectacular. And although these days we can argue that some of the latest iPhones and Samsung Galaxies are starting to catch up a little bit by using similar approaches, plus increasing exposure time to let in more light. So it's no longer necessarily alone in having this capability but it's still working very effectively and awesome to have. And then in terms of video footage, you can capture up to 4K at 30 FPS. You have unlimited free backups to Google Photos when it comes to your images and videos in storage saver mode, which is pretty much 12 megapixels. So that free Google Photos support is also something that you, again, no longer get anymore on the newer devices as they're trying to get you to purchase subscriptions. It's one of the perks of having a slightly older Pixel in this case. Again, even in more challenging lighting conditions, just snap and go, the simplicity of it all, and the awesome algorithms that are processing the images behind the scenes just turns out super reliable and beautiful shots. And by the way, yes, the Pixel 4 does support astrophotography mode as well for capturing even longer exposures of the nighttime sky. Overall, the OLED display is also super punchy and vibrant, as expected of an OLED panel, meaning that blacks are truly dark, supporting HDR10 content as well. So the Pixel 4 cameras are still very compelling, I have to admit. Maybe the only con is just missing an ultra-wide-angle lens, but that is forgivable. You can always use panorama mode, though that takes just a few extra seconds to stitch. Here's a quick demo of how it fares playing back a YouTube video in terms of the speaker quality next.
Takeaway being that it is excellent sounding stereo speakers with a lot of separation, giving you a pretty cinematic effect. And since there are no cutouts on the screen at least, there's no notches, no hole punch display, you get a uninterrupted panel that is still quite immersive for content consumption on YouTube, Netflix, and the like. Loading speeds are also quite fast, so it doesn't really take too much time to buffer videos, as you can tell here, even at higher resolutions. Although, again, going past 1080p is kind of overkill since the screen is capped at this res. Menu navigation going around the UI also still feels super fast and fluid, as we can expect from an 855 phone. And doing things like a bit of multitasking, picture-in-picture -picture mode, still work flawlessly without much complaints. Other elements, including haptics, those tiny details are also done really well on flagships, and the Pixel 4 is no exception. So if you're doing things like typing on the keyboard, it feels very tight and precise. As for other elements of the performance, it's also reasonably fast in terms of loading back web pages, as you can tell. So the overall modem on here for Wi-Fi, as well as 4G LTE, I would say is pretty strong. Consistently getting around three bars for Wi-Fi, even though we're a little bit further away, and even more complex sites, lots of videos and moving elements, banners, as you can tell, still load up in a reasonable amount of time. The RAM management also seems to be doing a respectable job, again with six gigabytes built on in. It mostly keeps up if you have around five or six tabs in the browser or similarly around four to five programs in the background, it can jump back and forth between them with relative ease. Now I'm also gonna show a couple of kind of interesting applications that support Soli mostly as demos from Google. You can swipe over here in fact to open up the Pokemon Ball, even reach in here to pet him, which I have to admit is just really cute and kind of a novel way of showing off the capabilities of Soli. Now, what is a little bit unfortunate though is during launch, Google actually made an interactive version of this Pokemon inspired uh, interactive Soli wallpaper that you could use on the home screen but unfortunately the license with the pokemon company expired and google didn't really renew that license and as a result they removed the pokemon limited edition wallpaper so i think that's a little bit of a shame and also goes to show how with software you have to be a little careful sometimes things which are connected over the internet things can actually be taken down or get soft bricked through updates, quote unquote. It is worth mentioning though that the Soli sensor, because it's using radar, is turned off when you are in the airplane mode. As for other applications to interact with Soli, like the music playing apps, they are a little hit or miss. So for example, here in the YouTube music app, you can use Soli, so you can tell that there is kind of a blue bar at the top, it means it's sensed your hand over it, and if you kind of push it there to the left, it knows that your hand there moved to the left, and it will be able to move to the next song, the previous song, which works all right. You can also play and pause by kind of putting your hand on top and then tapping on that. That will also pause the track and then resume it, as you can tell. And by the way, I do have to point out that this type of gesture control has been tried by Samsung in the past as well on some of their phones. But instead of using a radar sensor based on sound, it's using just the proximity light sensor or the ambient light sensor, which is found on existing smartphone hardware. So detecting if it's light or dark, it's able to know if you've waved at it or not. And the irony is on a sensor that is much cheaper and is already existing on most smartphones, the recognition isn't that much worse than what Soli provided. So having a brand new sensor developed just for this cause and it ultimately not working all that much better was perhaps another reason why it didn't fare too well. But regardless, again, an interesting way of at least thinking of how we can interact with phones. And as far as doing a little bit of gaming and installing third-party apps from the Play Store, there's absolutely nothing that you can't play and run on this thing. Everything is still fast to download, quick to load, and super smooth in terms of frame rates and animations. That's again thanks to that Snapdragon 855, which is still no slouch even today. I'll also briefly mention that this phone does have a eSIM capability as well. So like iPhones, you are able to have a virtual SIM popped in, in addition to the physical SIM card as another alternative, say if you're traveling. So that is more or less it as far as our revisited look back at the Google Pixel 4. It's always interesting looking back at Pixel products because from the hardware, the design is not the flashiest that started with the first generation model that is rather unassuming in terms of looks, but it's all about using software optimization to get you a more polished experience when you're actually using the phone. I'll also mention that the A55, although it does get a little bit warm as you are taking more images and recording video for more than say 10 minutes, it never gets 
too hot. Thermal throttling is thankfully not something that I encountered. And again, an excellent value overall if you are looking for a more compact smartphone and still with relatively powerful performance even to this state. Thanks for watching here at OS Reviews. That's been our look back at the Pixel 4 here in 2023.